Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be installing a Blox rigid collar. Basically a cheaper version of the spoon rigid collars. So this is the part number right here for Civic and Integra 9295-9401. So basically this is what the kit looks like. It comes with a bunch of these little washers. So basically the subframe is like this washer. It's got a bigger hole and the bolt goes through it. So the subframe can move a little bit back and forth. This is just something I grabbed for an example. So basically what this collar does is it slides into the subframe and it's the exact size of the bolt. So there's no movement in the subframe whatsoever. I'll insert a clip from the spoon promo video right here. In all modern production cars, the engine, transmission, suspension and body shell are all mounted to the subframe. Bolting the subframe and body shell together makes for an incredibly stiff construction, but problems arise between the mating of the two structures. You can see in this cut model that the bolt is far too small for the hole in which it is supposed to fit, with significant room either side of the bolt. The reason why the holes are made so big is to speed up the production process when the car is being built at the factory. However, because of the size of the hole, the body shell and subframe are able to move even when the bolt is in place. Looking at the pickup points from the subframe to the body shell, you can see the marks as evidence that the two panels are significantly misaligned. Further evidence shows that when the subframe is taken off, you can see the bolt is tightened with the hole offset, thus making it impossible to have an accurate geometry setup. So, how do the rigid collars work? The rigid collars will wipe out spring effect by giving the mounting bolt an even surface to bite into. The collars are constructed using a special aluminium which is tapered and when it is fitted and torqued up, the metal spreads to form an even surface and contact face for the panels to mount on, making the bolt hole a perfect fit. This is almost as strong as welding the components together as you would in a competition car for example. The rigid collars act as a body reinforcement and once fitted to the recommended key points where the subframe meets the chassis, the join between them will be perfect, significantly improving the handling of the car. Take a look at this example as the car comes over the step without the rigid collar. Notice the vertical movement in the body. Now look at the same car, this time fitted with rigid collars. The vertical movement has been reduced dramatically. Looking at the two tests side by side, the differences in the body movement are clear. The standard car at the top of your screen and the car fitted with rigid collars at the bottom. The rigid collar has removed any spring effect caused by the inaccurate join between the cross member and chassis. Note how the suspension is far more stable, resulting in better all-round handling. So to get started, I already have the car jacked up and the wheels off on the inside. already came up here and loosened up that steering joint in the back. Let me see if I'll get a better angle. So I loosened up this steering joint and if you see that yellow mark, that's where I marked it with a paint marker to try to get this all back together. I still haven't got the car aligned yet so that's not super important but I would like to put it back close as possible. So the rest of this video is pretty much going to be filmed underneath the car. I'll just have to grab some uh, sockets and whatnot and We'll pick back up from there. All right, so the first direction is to get the subframe loose. So if you look right back here, this is where the compliance bushing is. You'll have four 19s, one, two, three, and four. You wanna loosen these up, but don't take them all the way out. And then you'll have one 19 right here in between where the control arms connect together. And the same on the other side. Uh, the directions say drop it eight millimeters, but looking at mine, I don't have any drop in it. So I'm going to use a pry bar to pry it down some. So I have each one of the spacers separated. If you look at them real close, they do have part numbers like this one says EG54321. So I'm assuming the way that these directions are written, like it kind of shows you diagram A, rigid collar 1. I believe rigid collar 1 is going to go where this goes on here. So I'm going to start with the number ones and do those and then move on to the twos and so on. 
So I'm going to grab my two number ones and we'll try to get these mounted. All right, so I took out the long 19 right here. It's going to be hard to do this with one hand. So I'm just going to basically show you how I did it. I took a little pry bar, stuck it right up in here, pulled the subframe down against the pinch weld. You can see I have a gap there. And I'm going to slide in EG1 collar face down like this. Long side's going to be going into the subframe. Short side's going to be going into the frame of the car. And then I'm just going to put that bolt back in, hand tighten, and then we'll move on to the next one. All right, so this may not be the most instructional video, but I'm trying my best. It's kind of hard to even set a tripod up here because the car is so low to the ground. But I took out this big bolt right here. This one's just loose, and this just holds the compliance bushing. And I took out these two. This is going to be bolt two. This is going to be number three. So basically, I took a pry bar up here pried it down I took bushing number two which is this guy right here it says EG2 on it so the directions say have this collar facing up so basically when I was prying it I slid it in through the side right here and then I used a pick like this to slide it forward as I was prying down and then I pried from the side right here for number three, which is this guy right here, has a little raise on one side and a taller collar on the other side. The direction said for EG3 to be facing down, so you can kind of see it's facing down in here. So the last one is a really big bolt. That's going to get EG5, the big washer, right here. And then this guy right here has to slide in up here so I'm probably going to try to pry it from this way right here and then slide it in with the pick like I did it on these two so collar number two collar number three went in super easy uh, collar number four gave me the most problems on both sides this is number five right here but four goes underneath of here and you have to get the subframe down pretty far uh, so I had to undo the sway bar bracket here and then the sway bar bushing on this side I took I had these bolts out this bolt out I just left the front one in right here and then I took all the bolts out on this side and then I was able to pry it far enough just barely enough for it to slide in and then I used my pick to maneuver it in so it dropped down in a hole so I did that on both sides and I'm just tightening everything back up uh, pretty simple install it took me about 45 minutes But let me wrap this up and then we'll close out the video. All right, so I just finished torquing down all the subframe bolts Don't have an exact torque spec, but I'll tighten them up about tight as they were when they came off um, According to the spoon video, I'll put the link down below if you want to watch the whole thing this should keep the subframe from shifting left and right when you're driving it's supposed to make the suspension feel a little bit different so hopefully all these modifications that I'm doing to the suspension over the last couple videos it'll pay off when I finally do get to the track which I'm not a hundred percent sure because I'm trying to help my friend get a car together it's going to be his first Honda build for the track it's going to be a, a EK with a B20 coupe uh, post a little clip right here all these track cars coming together. Got the motor in today. Radiator. Now just to button everything up. Let me get a shot. Wanna be real? thing to do to the car that's why it's still jacked up I'll probably just make that to another video so that don't continue this one on that way it's more easily searchable 
but uh, if you have any questions about this uh, rigid compiler kit, Spoon makes the same exact one. The blocks one's like half the price. It's just uh, some aluminum washer, so I don't imagine the Spoon one and the blocks one being too much different. But uh, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them down below, and I'll always get back to you. But until next time, like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.